Assetto Corsa Competizione has some incredibly detailed physics at play, but even with all of that sophistication, there's some simple tweaks that can help you get faster or more effective on track. Let's take a look at throttle maps and brake pads. ECU and throttle map settings help determine how the engine's power is delivered in the GT3 cars in Assetto Corsa Competizione. A more aggressive map delivers a lot of speed at the expense of burning more fuel, whereas a less aggressive map dials back the speed but conserves a bit more fuel. That concept is pretty simple to understand, but it gets slightly more complicated because the settings aren't the same from car to car. For most of the cars in ACC, setting your throttle map to 1 gives you a faster car that's burning a lot of fuel, with the higher numbered settings being slightly slower and conserving a bit more fuel. Except Porsche. For Porsche, setting the throttle map to 8 gives you the most aggressive fuel delivery. The cars in Competizione have between 3 and 12 throttle map settings. In the case of Mercedes cars, you're presented with only aggressive, less aggressive and slow options. But the Ferrari Evo, by contrast, has five different throttle map settings for dry conditions alone, plus an additional three for wet conditions and four maps for slower conditions like formation laps and pace cars. So depending on the car, it can be a lot to keep in mind or a very simple thing. But it's an important setting. As a general rule, more aggressive settings should always be used for qualifying or hot lapping. Racing involves far more nuance in setting your throttle map, but it's generally a compromise between better lap times and managing fuel. And your fuel management strategy could be as simple as making sure you have enough to get to the end of the race, or more strategic management strategies to mitigate the number of pit stops in your race. The throttle map settings shouldn't just be seen as fast versus slow either. They also affect the linearity of the throttle. For example, a more linear throttle delivery tends to mean that the amount of power you're putting down is closer to directly proportional to the amount you're stepping on the accelerator. Depress the throttle halfway and you're delivering roughly half the available power. But throttle map tuning can turn this linearity into more of a curve. Again, I'm using simplified examples here, but if you're using a less linear delivery, depressing the pedal halfway may yield less than half the available power, but the power delivery trends up the more you depress it. So by the time you depress the pedal fully, it does deliver 100% of the available power. The wet settings take advantage of this non-linearity. Too much power delivery too fast in the wet can be disastrous, so wet throttle map settings tend to be more forgiving thanks to a slightly muted power delivery as you accelerate. Rather than bore you right now with page after page of throttle settings for each car, I've decided to bore you later in this video by listing all of their cars and their respective throttle settings at the end. Choosing the right set of brake pads for your car is far simpler than tweaking throttle maps for most of the cars, but just as important. And thankfully, the brake types are shared among all the cars and there's only four settings. Like your throttle settings, however, it's a compromise, in this case between performance and longevity. Better braking performance means you can brake later and improve your lap times, and more longevity of course means you can be more consistent and confident in your braking for longer periods. So here's the four types. Pad type 1 will likely be the pad you use for qualifying, sprint races, and hot stint sessions. They are designed to withstand about 3 hours of use and offer great braking performance, but the wear will be an issue towards the end of that 3 hours of track use. And once the pads start to wear, they tend to be less effective, overheat faster, and be less predictable and linear. Pad type 2 offers less braking performance than type 1, but they last longer, stay cooler, and are more predictable throughout the racing stint. The advantage of the improved heating characteristics is that you can close your braking ducts more than you could with Type 1 without risking too much overheating. And the improved longevity of the pads means you can easily race 12 hours or more without a significant drop off in performance. Type 3 could be looked at as a more extreme version of Type 2. The effective use range can now allow these pads to be used for the full duration of even a very long endurance race. And also, the heating characteristics are very predictable and linear, so you should choose pad type 3 in colder or wet conditions. And like type 2, you'll have more freedom to keep those brake ducts smaller without risking the overheating of the pads. And finally, pad type 4 ends the trend of reduced performance with increased longevity. Pad type 4 is a very low duration, high performing pad. Very short sprint races and hot lapping are really the only times you'd use this pad. The performance drop off is sharp towards the end of the one hour mark of driving. It's safe to say that these pads should mainly be used for solo hot lapping sessions. It could be fun though since you can really push your braking distances much further than you might be used to. 
So that's it. Two quick tips that will hopefully f help you find a bit more speed on track in ACC. Don't be afraid to experiment with various throttle maps and brake pads and find out what works best for you and your favorite car in ACC. And thank you for watching.